Entering the city, Paul would have gone through this, Porta Capina, the main gate that opened onto the Appian Way. From here, he would have probably gone by the Circus Maximus and then the Imperial Palace before arriving at his destination. According to Acts chapter 28, the centurion Julius gave custody of Paul to the chief of the soldiers, who was probably the commander of the Praetorian Guard. This is consistent with what we know from Roman history since the Praetorian Guard was in charge of prisoners sent to Rome from outside provinces. Now, because Paul was put under the watch of the Praetorian Guard, his rented quarters were probably very near their fortress and barracks. The barracks, or the Castra Praetoria, was constructed in 23 AD, allowing the guard to be centralized in one location. It was a massive fortress at the edge of the city. Some of the ruins are still visible here today. Recently, while digging a nearby metro tunnel, workers discovered Praetorian barracks from the early second century. This awesome find included mosaic floors and a 100 yard long corridor with some 39 rooms used for sleeping quarters. Now, to be under guard by the Praetorians meant that Paul was considered an important prisoner, since these soldiers were the personal elite guards of the emperor himself. Augustus established the Praetorians, and Tiberius stationed them here in Rome at their own fortress. During the time of Claudius and Nero, the Praetorian Guard was expanded to about 10,000 soldiers. The Book of Acts continues. When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. Acts 28, 16. Paul was probably taken to an apartment in one of the many multi-story housing blocks or insulae of Rome. According to data from the late Roman period, there were about 45,000 of these insulae housing blocks in the city, ranging from two to five stories high and often having a ground level shop down beneath. Many of these structures were known to be quite dangerous with fires, floods, and collapses, a constant threat. This is where Paul lived under house arrest as he awaited his hearing with the emperor. Three days after settling into his new apartment, Paul called the leaders of the Jews to a meeting. When they had assembled, he said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. The Jews objected, so I was compelled to make an appeal to Caesar. I certainly did not intend to bring any charge against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound in this chain. Acts 28, 17 through 20. The Jewish leaders had not heard a negative report about Paul individually, but they did know of the sect of Christianity that had been spoken against in communities of Jews all over the empire. Because Paul was under house arrest, he was not able to venture out into the synagogues here in Rome to preach, as was his custom in other cities. However, the Jewish leaders did come to Paul's apartment, and there they heard the story of his arrest. And then Paul preached the gospel to them, reasoning with them from the scriptures. Similar to what happened in other cities, some of the Jews were persuaded, while others disagreed, and so a dispute arose among them. But because Paul was under house arrest, constantly guarded by a Roman soldier, they were not able to run Paul out of town this time. 